it. Her brain doesn't work if I stand on that side, which is why she was like yeah. feeling off. Also, is my part on the right side? I accidentally to the middle part the other day, and now I don't feel um, it's on the right side. I can't remember. This Let me like, know. This is like a Berenstain Bears <laughs> moment. But then when you take a selfie, it flips, right? I don't know. Yeah. And then you can flip the photo, and then what is anything? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is the confusion in which I've been traveling through the world with for ever since I parted my hair, which was like six months ago. Really, you guys? Yeah. So, middle part. Middle part. Yeah. Okay. Middle part works. Um, anyways. Oh my god. Welcome to the Ice Cream Social. This is our last summer month. But you always have ice cream, so. Um, I've already warned a few of you. I gave up deodorant like two months ago. <laughs> so yes, it's me. You smell. Um, but there's like one article that circulates on the internet that tells you how bad deodorant is for you, and I somehow stumble upon it like at the beginning of every summer. So thank that. Um, ice cream social. Ice cream social. Um, yeah. So it's gonna be hot next month. Yes. We've got some exciting stuff lined up for next month as well, but we're wrapping up the summer here. I'm so grateful. Um, Y'all know that, oh my god, I'm just rambling at this point. Okay, the anthology. Uh, we officially have a release date, and there's a few of you in this room that are featured in our first anthology that's coming out through host publications. Raise your hand. Woo! 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 Oh, that's a lot. You can tell them when it's coming out. It is going to be the fourth Friday of October. Uh, we don't know dates. We just know like that we jumped from. I'll just look it up really quick. <laughs> it's a twenty-four. We're very professional. Um, I'm looking here we go. Just now. One, two, three, four. The twenty-sixth of October. Put in your calendars. That is our. Yes. Halloween themed ice cream social, so it's come in costume. Yes, we dress up, we give out prizes, um, but it's gonna be extra special, so there's gonna be like extra extra prizes. Um, we're really excited. If you come dressed as the ice cream social girl that's on the flyers, that's, that's a huge bonus. You might want a prize for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so please come out for that. It's it's a collection of the first two years of the ice cream social. Uh, we invited all the featured readers to submit and we're super proud of it, and I can't wait to get it in your hands. Yes, and I do want to mention, if y'all have been to some of our ice cream social events, you may have met Nat Bradford. Um, <laughs> sorry, her Instagram handle is Nat Brad. Yeah, anyway. That's she's doing way. the cover, and it's fantastic. Yes, and Chandra's been showing some people. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just very excited. <laughs> so you could probably put enough ice cream in her, and she'll show you. And then, um, <laughs> And then we have an amazing introduction by our dear friend and poet, Kimberly Olidio, and who we were right here last month because you were here. Yeah. That was awesome. We finished the introduction a couple of weeks ago, and we're just so excited, and it's real, and it's just the weirdest, most exciting feeling. But yeah, so mark your calendars. It's happening. It's going to be really fun. Someone will probably dance. <laughs> <laughs> My yeah, that, that's a nose goes. <laughs> Anyways, I have two little plugs too. Um, okay. One is, they're both for the store. It's Women in Translation Month. Um, Malvern has created a beautiful table over there that features Women in Translation. Um, please pick up one of those. They're all great and we need more international voices in our lives. And uh, the other plug is that um, Malvern has their Clear the Shelf sale every year. It's like our biggest sale of the year. Um, it starts Monday, runs through some Jump. date. <laughs> <laughs> it runs for a while, but it's going to be two more weeks. two weeks. It runs for two weeks. More than a thousand books are going to be 50% off. There's going to be $4 clearance titles. There's going to be shirts on sale, cards on sale, and journals on sale. So please come by starting Monday for every day for two weeks. <coughs> it's a good every day. All right, without further ado, <laughs> open mic. So excited. We're really excited for our featured readers, um, but we like to start off with our open micers who bring us such joy. And our first open micer this evening is Jenny Quito. I'm recently, uh, or newly, a psychiatric nurse. So a lot of my poems have been 
psych related lately. And this first one is, um, it's about how I've come full circle. It's called Orientation Day One Redux. Today I walk these halls and remember my night and day as a patient here. And here now I am the nurse who wrapped and wrapped my wrist in gauze, too young to keep the pain then. My night and day as a patient here, to hear voices void, eyes down, hands sound against glass, my wrist in gauze, too young to keep the pain. I remember thinking then, I don't belong here. I am not a voice void, eyes down, hand sound against glass. Now I am the nurse who wraps and gently wraps. And though I remember thinking then, I don't belong here. I am not today. Today I belong as I walk these halls and remember. And then I'll read one more. It's called Mother Nights and Days Left in a Hole. Scathed, unscathed, scathed longer. She and death, delicate, make a cross. It's the intersection I question. Her answer, unruly to the touch. Her backyard memories, our bones, bleached the color of secret families keep buried under shopping carts, trading Sunday paper coupons for discounts on World Wary. While I wonder where my mother is, who my mother was before the hum of hot children, and I wonder what she wished for when she wore dresses on days, caressing him, before her voice deadened to distant in the quiet fill of night, ripped irreparable by my passage into days. There is no seam left to keep her from this threadbare. There is no way to fill my mother whole again. There is no way to mend the hole that keeps my mother sick of her days and nights. Each hour lost is an echo of her hollowness. So many people, as our resident playwright, Anissa, please take the stage. Trying something new this week. Um, went to this thing called the One Minute Play Festival earlier this week. It was awesome. Um, and it was very inspirational because I didn't realize how much you could do within one minute. So gave myself my own prompts based on some song lyrics, um, incorporated them into two different one minute plays. So first one, Cheryl, excuse me, silence. Cheryl, excuse me, step. Yes, Miss Cheryl, Cheryl. Don't you miss Cheryl me? My name is Cheryl and I've been calling you for 20 minutes. Steph, sorry, sorry Cheryl, I'm here now. You have your show coming up and we thought you wanted peace. Cheryl, if I wanted peace, I would have told you what that's what I wanted. Where did the agency even find all of you? Steph, is there something I can get you? Cheryl, yes. Awkward, pause. Cheryl, I want you to bring in five people waiting outside for my show. If I'm ready to do some, I'm ready to do something charitable and sign some autographs. Steph looks on the other side of the door. Steph, there is no one. Cheryl, no one? Where are my haters? Steph, Cheryl, you don't got them. You're not famous. <laughs> Cheryl, no? Here's the second one. Girl A, girl, we are in trouble. Girl B, not this drama bullshit again. Girl A, you don't understand. Recently he said that she said that we said, Girl B, we didn't say anything. Why do I always get lumped in with you? Girl A, listen, recently he said that she said that we said that he said some shit about me. Girl B, did you tell him that you said some shit about yourself? Girl A, of course not. I have dramatic AF friends. Girl B, don't look at me. What are you gonna do about this? Girl A, I'm gonna straighten this out. I'm gonna tell everyone that actually he said some shit about me and this telephone thing has to stop. Girl B, that's not gonna work. Girl A, what do you propose? 
girl B. Get new friends. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Next is Isabel Sanchez. I do a lot of my writing when I'm sleeping because I get frustrated with things that bothering me. I go to sleep without solving them. So at 3 a.m. I'm like typing on my phone on a photo with Instagram like and then I realize I wrote something. So mm. that's one of these. Um, I'm a girl and by that I mean I follow butterflies to unknown places. I don't count my steps as I go or look behind me to remember how to get back home. When I say I'm a girl I mean I'm fearless. Like maybe I'm a princess but I can slay my own dragon because daddy told me I don't need a man. I'm a girl but pink stopped being my favorite color when people told me that was the only real option I had so now it's gray. And if I want to feel extra special, it's help you put silver. <laughs> <laughs> Mirrors have become a love-hate relationship. I would love to say I'm happy with what I see every day looking back at me like, yeah, girl, go get it. But society has taught me to look for reasons to not be loved. I guess I'm also a woman because I like to go out drinking and dancing with my friends, but the girl in me waits, drunk in bathroom lines, and tells other girls how special they are until I sober up and realize the person I've been complimenting all night is my own reflection. I'm a girl and I guess I'm so embarrassed to walk around my own house naked because a woman's body has been so sexualized that I can't even love the stretch marks that have appeared on my body once coming out of a great depression without turning red in the face. I've had these moments of confidence where I thrive in everything that I am, but when I have those moments, when those moments are over, I make sure to question myself like, where the hell did that come from? I don't write insecure on my forehead because I flaunt too much confidence. I'm a girl, but I was taught, taught to fake it till you make it. Chin up, princess, don't let your, don't drop your crown, but what will a crown do for me in a fight? Why am I a girl in a man-made world when I can be a wom woman womb is strong-willed, intelligent, independent, vulnerable? Why can't I be all these things on my account? Well, I guess it's because girls have to ask for permission. So this first poem is called uh, Midnight Intercessions because I've been really into looking at like saints lately. I don't know. Midnight Intercessions. Everyone's been singing their songs for years with straightened backs and superstition. Those who once had livers like ours, joints aching from the changing seasons, snowy pastures, weedless grasses, Bodies like pink candles, branchless yet reaching, exposed roots. I carry my wisdom in my teeth. I could dream forever of my demons, mere apprentices, collecting portraits of a woman undone, elegies broken in half like spaghetti noodles. I continue the search for the forgotten saints being unmade in your palm. O oh, patron saint of peacemakers, did you speak the language of self-destruction or did you just take two steps back? O oh, patron saint of being burned alive, what a vehicle of catch and release, what a relief that Jesus took the wheel. O oh, patron saint of division, of being in two places at once, the head and heat, I'm in hot water, staring up at bandana lace skies, at sea monsters billowing past, flesh so like yours, the forbidden things I've touched eat me alive. Most gracious advocates, grant me passage to the prince of the field. I want all six inches of his prayer, sour and long stopped, fisting beads of penitence. Let me dip into his glorious mystery, pulling out the inner workings of hallelujah. My lips can move silently too. And then I have one more. Um, and this one's called, I want to rob you of your game face. <laughs> yeah, subtle. Um, I open wide like a chorus girl. A kiss, a vow, a punch in the gut, all cheap. I wanted to get off, to be splashed against your west axis, to traverse mountains, splitting myself like timber. I watched for signs, but I'd never get an answer of which animal I needed to be. I found you months later without me, setting up camp, smiling and roasting my favorite shade of blue. 
indigo drip from your lips, a stained glass suitor. I touched myself. I painted my mouth whiter. Your trail disappeared with its explanations. I didn't have the luxury of pride. Dark spots became a body with no mind. Its endings reminded me of yours. New moons grew into me like a mouth guard. I fell out of the color spectrum and the forest lost sight of me. This is to say I became obscene in my longing, which is to say I didn't exist. I was on track to unscrew myself from you. I was on a track, a song was playing. The words were blank but filled my pockets with amber sands and hobbit fireworks. I emptied them on the ground and groped through kibble. I couldn't confirm your humanity, so I sent pictures, imagining physical maladies and black eyes materialized like quarters. Remember how astonished I was? How it looked like I'd seen you? You were trying to talk around the pool. You pinned me to. Smell of kerosene and honeysuckle followed me all summer like a dog. Or a string of sleepless nights. I became fictional. You asked me to make you feel better, or less guilty, or both, to give you a break from your own exile. My astonishment was pure. This was the only time you knew what I was thinking. I felt accomplished, having not thrown up on the train, holding it in till the next stop. The night before, I'd gotten drunk, angry in the old way, let my mouth fill with the churn of contempt, let my tongue scrape against your attempts to placate my rage. My gut gurgled in fear of your leaving, preferred to preempt waking up stark lonely, to sip instead on the thud thudding of self-inflicted aches. We thought we'd moved past this. We thought we left the binging and purging of my pain down south, littered it like cigarette ash along that northbound highway. But there it was again, leaving my body as a wine sour stench, slowly drenching my dress as the seamstress explains how I'll need to double bustle the hem on our wedding day. Two trains later, I'm ready to get back on, to suffer back to our stop, our bed, to curl up next to you as you embrace me like a flaw. You will apologize and I will let you without you having done anything wrong. Second poem titled, Contemplating Antinatalism on Day Two of My Period. <laughs> <clears throat> my uterus can go fuck itself today, throbbing like a distant siren, wailing muffled blood blurred words onto my panties like fear and shame. My womb is famous for its chasm, filled only with its own name. Why can't I expand my womanhood to mean more than not mother without shedding rust black blame? Nobody wants to hear about this oneness, about this monthly meditation on staying the same. How much does a woman have to give to outweigh a mouth around her nipples? What of her must she exchange? Or turning the colors of bruises, being taken out back, if you know what I mean. And I should want to fill this house with more humans, endure shitting and splitting, maybe die in the name of sanctified pain. I'd rather rip my sex organs right out of me, wave them as a white flag, forget about them, mistake them for something less lethal, a flower, a purse. 